Hare Krishna. <laughs> this is a nice bhajan. It's uh, just the names of Krishna in Vrindavan. Different pastimes, different relationships with his devotees. <clears throat> this bhajan was a favorite of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He had this bhajan played just as he was departing the world. This was one of his more favorite. So we'll begin. Yaso Mati Nandana Brajavanagara Gokuranjana Kahana Oh, there's fear out of all of the 
नथ भाराए Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Balaramji. This is a verse from the first chapter of the tenth canto, the advent of Lord Krishna. Introduction. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vasudeva Kalanata Vasudeva Kalanata Sahasravadana Swarat Agrato Bhavita Devo Agrato Bhavita Devo 
Hare Priya Chikir Saya Hare Priya Chikir Saya Vasudeva Kalananta Vasudeva Kalananta Sahasra Vadana Svarat Sahasra Vadana Svarat Agrato Bhavita Devo Agrato Bhavita Devo Hare Priya Chikir Saya Hare Priya Chikir Saya Vasudeva Kalananta Vasudeva Sahasra Vadana Swarat Sahasra Babita Devo Agrato Babita Devo Hare Priya Chikir Saya Hare Priya Chikir Saya Vasudeva Kalamnata Vasudeva Kalamnata Sahasra Vadana Swarat Sahasra Vadana Vasudeva Kalananta Vasudeva Kalananta Sahasravadana Svara Sahasravadana Svara Agrato Bhavita Devo Agrato Bhavita Devo Hari Briyachi Kirshaya Hari Briyachi Kirshaya Vasudeva Kalananta Vasudeva Kalananta Sahasravadana Haswarat Sahasravadana Haswarat Agrato Bhavita Devo Agrato Bhavita Devo Hare Priya Chikirshaya Hare Priya Chikirshaya Ladies Vasudeva Kalananta Vasudeva Kalananta Sahasravadana Haswarat Sahasravadana Vasudeva Kalananta Vasudeva Kalananta Sahasra Vadana Svara Sahasra Vadana Svara Agrato Bhavita Devo Agrato Bhavita Devo Hare Priya Chikirshaya Hare Priya Chikirshaya When the dot on the last line on the last part of the, the line is on the second and the fourth line and then you say nata you say taha and when it's on the first and third line you do not <laughs> it's the sanskrit way of chanting the mantra because sanskrit actually is in two lines not four but for the sake of chanting here they put it in four lines so it's always, a, and so you, when you say Vasudeva Kalanata, that's right, it's not Kalanataha. If that was in the second line, then you would say Nataha. But if it's on the four first line, you don't say. Because it's right in the middle of the sentence, actually, because it's not really the end of the first line. Because all Sanskrit is in two, two lines, not four. Okay, Sanskrit lesson <laughs> zero zero one. <laughs> okay, Vasudev Kala Anatta. The plenary expansion, expanding expansion of Lord Krishna, known as Ananta Dev. Sankarshana. Ananta, Ananta, the all-pervasive incarnation of the Supreme, the of the Supreme. Lord, <laughs> Sahasravadana, having thousands of hoods, having thousands of hoods. Hmm. Swarat, Swarat, fully independent, independent. Agartha, previously, previously. 
Bhavita Bhavita will appear. Will appear. Deva. 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 The Lord. The Lord. Hare. Hare. Of Lord Krishna. Of Lord Krishna. Priyachikirsaya. Priyachikirsaya. With the desire to act for the pleasure. With the desire to act for the pleasure. Translation. The foremost manifestation of Krishna is Sankarsana, who is known as Ananta. He is the origin of all incarnations within this material world. Previous to the appearance of Lord Krishna, this original Sankarshan will appear as Baladev, just to please the Supreme Lord Krishna in his transcendental pastimes. I'll read that again. The foremost manifestation of Krishna is Sankarsana, who is known as Ananta. He is the origin of all incarnations within the material world. Previous to the appearance of Lord Krishna, this original Sankarsana will appear as Baladev just to please the Supreme Lord Krishna in his transcendental pastimes. Srila Prabhupada's very short purport. <clears throat> Sri Baladev is the Supreme Personality of Godhead Himself. <clears throat> he is equal in supremacy to the Supreme Godhead, yet wherever Krishna appears, Sri Baladev appears as his brother, sometimes elder and sometimes younger. When he appears, all his plenary expansions and incarnations also appear with him. This is elaborately explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita. This time, Baladev would appear before Krishna as Krishna's elder brother. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyanajana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gadave Namaha Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavari Pasyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Paevacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasiri Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So when usually Krishna appears, he appears in order for him to, as is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita, Yada Yada Hi Dharma Sya Glanir Bhavati Bharata Bhutanam Dharma Sya Tadatmanam Srijami Aham Paritranaya Sadunam Benasanaya Chaduskritam Dharma Samstarpanartaya Sambhavami Yuge Yuge A millennium after a millennium, whenever there is a decline in religious principles and significant rise in irreligion as we have today, <laughs> and on also to please his devotees or give pleasure to his devotees. The Lord appears. So when he appears, he obviously pre appears with his plenary expansions, parts and parcels, associates. And normally when he appears as the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his original form, he appears with his brother, Sri Balaramji. So, of course, we understand we, he appeared 5,000 plus years ago in the area of the world which we know is today as Vrindavan. So at that time, there's a nice little story. It's just a brief little narration of how well, Krishna was forced to appear at that particular time. It's mentioned in the Mahabharata. It goes back before where Lord Parasaram had also a plenary expansion of the Lord in order to chastise the, what we might call the unqualified rulers from ruling. Uh, he, as it mentions, he, his chastising was quite complete. <laughs> he finished them. <laughs> 
21 generations of Kshatriyas with his speed of the wind acts, <laughs> speed of the mind acts. <laughs> How fast is the mind? That's fast. The wind is slower than the mind. You're sitting here and you think of India, you're there. That's that's how fast the mind is. <laughs> so he, he was able to wheel that axe at that speed. <laughs> and he killed 21 generations of Kshatriyas. But then the, the, the earth was devoid of leadership. So it became a problem. <clears throat> how to continue on with, with uh, rule and this time establish a rule that was saintly. So there was a plan that was devised by the royal families to reunite the princesses with satus, sages. And uh, by that unity of the satus and these princesses, a saintly class of rulers came into being. They called Rajarsis. Many great kings came from that. And then the world, again, was, uh, what we say, governed by uh, Dharma. <laughs> Saintly kings were everywhere. But this is the material world. <laughs> and nothing lasts long within a period of, we might say, eternity. You can't calculate things in that way. But after some time, the demons attacked the uh, demigods and the heavenly planets and it was a great battle and the demons were losing the battle <coughs> so they decided to make their base earth <laughs> in order to use it as a place to attack the demigods so the plan was to incarnate into different species of life and again take over the earth in a demoniac way and that's where you hear of all these demons that Krishna killed, Agasura and Bakasura and Keshi and Ristasura. All of these were demons that had incarnated in different species of life in order to, again, to capture the earth under demoniac control. And that's when that became profuse, in other words, when the demons were uh, very much strongly situated on the earth. Of course, Kamsa was there, and many other powerful demons. And then the earth was overburdened with demonic forces, and their religion was again prominent. It mentions in the Bhagavatam that when the demigods are in control, the mode of goodness is prominent. When the demons are in control, the mode of passion is prominent. And when the yakshas and rakshashas are in control, the mode of ignorance is prominent. Or you might say it the other way, when the mode of goodness is prominent, the demigods are in control, demons and then... So the modes actually dictate the population and the, the modes are really dictated by the collective karma of the people. So we see today, just in today's world, it's quite demoniac because most people are sinful very sinful society we live in all over the world. Now, people don't have any regard for morality, civility, civility, or any kind of good qualities, and everything goes on. That's why the demons are so prominent today. So, Krishna has appeared 5,000 years ago when that situation was there by the request of Mother Earth, who was overburdened. She came to pray to the demigods headed by, at that time, Lord Brahma. And then Brahma, seeing the pitiful situation in the earth, went to the shore of the milk ocean and explained that along with the, the, the chief demigods, they petitioned the Lord to appear. And when the Lord appeared, <coughs> of course he decided to appear according to his own will. Uh, <clears throat> the prophecy was there that the Lord was going to a prayer and that word got around. So we, then we fly, flash forward a little bit to the story of uh, how Vasudev and Devaki uh, on their wedding day was about to celebrate in a very glorious way. And uh, 
Kamsa was the brother of Vasu, um, of Devaki. So he wanted to do some service for his sister. Isn't that very nice? <laughs> we should do that. Keep the family together. <laughs> so he uh, decided to drive the chariot as a way to show his, uh, you can't say affection, but his interest in doing something for his sister on the wedding day. But as he took the reins of the chariot, then a prophecy appeared within the heavens, and the word was, Kamsa, you're a fool. <laughs> the seventh, the eighth child of your sister will be the cause of your destruction. <laughs> and when Kamsa heard that being a demon, and Prabhupada makes the point that demons, they don't care. <laughs> When everything interferes with their sense gratification, they will simply do anything to remove that or to achieve that either way. And so Kamsa became very, and he was about to kill his sister, he took out his sword, but Vasudeva stopped him with very powerful words and made a petition, and it's a long story how Vasudeva actually, and it's a long dialogue that's mentioned in this uh, how he convinced Kamsa to desist from killing his sister in this particular situation. And he promised, he said, it's the eighth child. So I promise you that I'll deliver all of the child children that are born of Devaki to you. And that was the only way he could prevent his wife from being killed. It was a compromise for Otherwise, there was no way he was about to kill his sister. Kamsa knew that Vasudev was a man of word, so he agreed. And then as the children were born one after another, six children were delivered to Kamsa. And Prabhupada, of course, again back, Prabhupada says the demons will do anything. They don't care. <clears throat> They'll kill their father, their mother, anybody, their brother. Whatever it takes for them to fulfill their, their lusty desires for sense gratification. That's real demons. Nowadays we have some demons out there, but they're kind of like, you know, Prabhupada said, they're very in insignificant. You just take a slap and they're finished. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like petty demons. They can't, they can't do much. They make some bogus political proposals and try to start a war here and there, but... They're pretty bad at it, too. That's the effects of Kali Yuga. Even the demons are not so good. <laughs> <laughs> the quality of demonic life has been reduced in all aspects of... So, but they're around. They're still around making some trouble for everybody. Even the devotees can sometimes get bothered by the demons. Uh, so... Uh, the plan was in when, when it was in going it was in position, and now uh, six in, children were born, and now and of course Kamsa was afraid that Devaki would not be around, so he decided to lock up his sister and her her husband Vasudev in jail. That way he could have the children when they were first born. And uh, so now, <clears throat> after six children was born, Krishna alerted Yogamaya, and it's mentioned here, that, that the next child that is coming to Devaki is actually my plenary portion, or actually my, my, my brother. And therefore, in order to save him from the hands of Kamsa, you, Yoga Maya, the internal energy of the Lord, you have to respond by saving him, by moving him out of that womb. Jai Sri Sri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Maharani Ki Jai Sri Sri Golden Itai Ki Jai. So the Lord ordered, the Lord, all, potent, all my potency, he's talking to Yoga Maya, you are worshipful for the entire world and whose nature is to bestow good fortune upon all living entities. Go to Vraj, where there live many cowherd men and their wives, 
In that beautiful land where many cows reside, Lorohini, the wife of Vasudev, is living at the home of Nanda Maharaj. All wives of Vasudev are also living, other wives of Vasudev are also living. They're incognito because of fear of Kamsa. Please go there. And Krishna, and the Lord continues, within the womb of Devaki is my partial plenary expansion known as Sankarsana or Sesha. Without difficulty, transfer him into the womb of Rohini. O auspicious Yoga Maya, I shall then appear with my full six opulences to save the son of Devaki. And you will appear as the daughter of Mother Yasoda, the queen of Nanda Maharaj. So here Krishna's making arrangements to prevent the seventh child, which is uh, Baladev, from being harassed by Kamsa. And he has a bigger plan also. He wants Baladev to get to Vrindavan. <laughs> so Yoga Maya, it's mentioned in Prabhupada's uh, discussions that Yoga Maya thought, oh my God, to transfer the Supreme Personality of Godhead from the womb of Devaki into the womb of Rohini. And she, she um, expressed her apprehension to the Lord. And the Lord said, don't worry, I will give you the power to carry it out. <laughs> That's very important to understand as devotees. Um, Whatever efforts we make in devotional service, if we simply pray to and depend on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, we will never be impeded in our devotional service. And Prabhupada mentions that. He makes it very simple. He says, if you simply remember the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, in all of your efforts in devotional service, you will always be successful. <laughs> Just by remembering the Supreme Lord's lotus feet, you re receive his special mercy and the ability to carry out your devotional service in what we say an acceptable and pleasing way. And that is how devotional service becomes successful, simply by remembering Krishna and praying to the Lord and praying to the Lord's representative. Then we become able to carry out, and then there's, no, there's nothing that is difficult. In Krishna consciousness. Even what appears to be difficult becomes easy. It says that also in Chaitanya Charitamrita, simply by remembering Lord Chaitanya, <coughs> difficult things to, to accomplish become very easy to carry out. And one who forgets that same Supreme Personality of God and even the simplest things become very difficult. <laughs> So here's the dear. When we therefore we understand that the, whatever we can do in our efforts in devotional service really comes from the mercy of the Lord. That is our success. We may have so many abilities. We may have so many good qualities. We may have so many some great intelligence, but that's really external. Really, it's the mercy of the Lord that, that activates all of these good qualities that you have to make things successful, or what we say, acceptable as offerings to the Supreme Lord. So this is our success in bhakti, <laughs> just to remember the Lord. By remembering the Lord, that is also devotional service, aside from carrying out the activities. And so now, thus, then, now the seventh son appears within the womb of Devaki. <clears throat> and Kamsa is also thinking. And then at one point, Yogamaya jumps in and she does her service. Now Rohini is in Vrindavan. As is mentioned, Vasudev wanted to protect some of the ladies, many of them were his wives. He had, he had about seven wives, I believe. And one was Rohini. So he sent her to Vrindavan to stay with Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yasoda. And so Rohini was also pregnant at the time in Vrindavan. But simultaneously, 
or apparently simultaneously, and there was miscarriages in both ladies. <laughs> I mean, there was a miscarriage in Devaki, and Devaki's mm, child was transferred into the womb of Rohini. Rohini felt <coughs> something has changed. They thought it was a miscarriage, but it wasn't a miscarriage. It was just Baladev actually entering into the womb of Rohini. And Prabhupada wants to make a point. He says, not like we do it. When the Lord wants to appear, he simply appears within the mind of the devotee and then transferred from the mind of the devotee into the mind of the devotee's wife and then from the mind of the devotee's wife into the womb and then the Lord appears in that way. And so there's none, nothing like the process by which we create children. The Lord bypasses all of that and enters simply into the, the womb of his devotee and then he appears in that way. <clears throat> So it appeared that Rohini and Devaki had a miscarriage, and, but it was just a transfer, and then therefore she was protected, and Baladev was protected, and, and he grew up in Vrindavan as Krishna's older brother. And then, of course, when the eighth child was born, then that was uh, Krishna, and then Devaki had uh, appeared, Krishna had appeared in the jail cell with Devaki, and then eventually. He was taken by Vasudev across the Jamun in the middle of the night and and exchange for the girl that appeared in the in the womb of uh, uh, Yasoda. And then it appeared that uh, actually Yasoda had uh, a girl. But it mentions also <clears throat> in another place and also in the Bhagavatam that Yasoda had twins, a boy and a girl, simultaneously. But the, the pregnancy caused her to fall asleep right after the child was born. And so it wasn't known. There were actually two children. And so when uh, Vasudev took Krishna that was born in jail, which we called Vasudev Krishna, he switched the child <clears throat> with the girl, and the two Krishnas merged into one. So Vasudev Krishna and Vrindavan Krishna became one, who are now protected from Kamsa by being in Vrindavan. And then Yogamaya was taken to, that was the child <clears throat> by, by, uh, Yasoda, <clears throat> yeah, that's okay, these, these things come and go. <laughs> and then when Kamsa heard that the child was born, he immediately became anxious, ran to the jail cell, but then David, he said, it's a girl. <laughs> you have no fear from this girl, it's not a boy. Kamsa was bewildered. And he, did, he, was, he was thinking, I'm not going to take any chances. <laughs> and so he tried to kill the girl. He grabbed it and pulled it away from Devaki after she offered really heartfelt, pitiful prayers to pray to her, her demoniac brother to spare this girl. But he had no compunction for anything, no, no compassion for anyone. And he just grabbed it and he, she, he was about to smash her on a rock. But she flew out of his arms and manifested eight, four, eight, eight arms and said, You fool, Kamsa. <laughs> you can't kill me. <laughs> and then he realized it was his all worshipful D.D. Durga, because the demons, they worship Durga, <laughs> many of them. And Kamsa was bewildered. And then if her Balaram was safe. So Balaram and Krishna appear. And it's mentioned that uh, in every manifestation of Krishna, just like he appeared as in with when Ramachandra appeared, he re appeared as Lakshman, the younger brother. When he appeared as with Krishna, he was Balaram. And again, Brajendra Nandanaye, 
Sachi Sutta Hoilo Se Balaram Hoilo Nitai. When he came in this age to spread or to assist in spreading the, the holy name of the Lord, he came as Lord Nityananda. <clears throat> so there's no difference between Lord Nityananda and Lord Balaram. They are the same person in two different forms, that's all. It's not that they're two different manifestations of the Godhead, they're the same manifestation, but manifested in a different form, and for the practically the same reason to assist. It mentions that when Krishna expands, his first expansion is Sri Balaramji. <laughs> what is the difference between Balaram and Krishna? Try not to put your back to the deities, you know. You just kind of like sit on an angle, yeah. Like that, that's better, yeah. Is that, that's okay, we don't... We keep Krishna in front. <laughs> and when Balaram, <clears throat> Krishna expands, he expands into Balaram. What's the difference between Balaram and Krishna? So it says color, yes, thank you. <laughs> and what is, it, what is the different colors? Is it bl is it actually black? It has many descriptions. Yeah, so one of the description is, is is like a tamal crowd. So if you're in India during the rainy season, you'll see the sky. The sky behind the cloud is actually blue, and the cloud is passing through the sky. But because the blue tinge is actually coming through the passing cloud, it looks somewhat bluish at the same time blackish. It's so it's a blackish blue color, sometimes more blue, sometimes more black. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Krishna has that color, but that color is used, that analogy is used just to give a little indication. Because there's no color that we can really say in this world can describe the actual color of the Lord. Because his colors are completely spiritual and transcendental. We use these analogies just to give a little understanding for our own edification. And Balaram is what color? White. White. Like what? What's the comparison? Milk. Hmm? Milk. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, some milk. <laughs> Maybe a hymn some milk. <laughs> uh, but it's it's so white that it's it's beyond white. <laughs> the the I guess the analogy is the during the spring season, when the spring is appearing, you see these big billowing clouds in the sky and they're they're like foamy white. It's like whiter than white. <laughs> Uh, his color is compared in that way to that. And so that's mentioned, that's the only difference between the two. And when Balaram, after he appears in the expansion, of course he's eternal, and he expands into what is called Chaturvyuha, Sankarshan, Aniruddha, Vasudev, and Pradyumna. And then Again, that expansion, that Sankarshan expands into Lord Narayan, and then Lord Narayan expands into the second Chaturvyuha, Vasudeva, Sankarshan, Anirura, and Pradyumna. And from the second Sankarshan expansion comes Mahavishnu. So Baladev actually facilitates all of the manifestations, both of the material and spiritual, so it says that the entire spiritual world is Baladev. All of the planets, Lord Narayan, everything is an expansion of Lord Baladev. So Baladev's role in relationship to Krishna is that he assists the Lord in all of his desires, both within the spiritual world and in, and in the creation of the material world. So Baladev is known as he is known as Servitor Godhead. There is God who is being served and there is God who is serving. And sometimes we use that same description for the spiritual master. The spiritual master, the bona fide spiritual master, is considered to be a manifestation of Lord Balaram 
who was also a servitor Godhead. That's why sometimes it is mentioned that we should see that the, the spiritual master is the representative of the, of the Lord in the manifestation of being served. And he serves the Lord, but he is also an aspect of the, of the um, spiritual realm. Srila Prabhupada made that point. He said, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Srivas. These are the five manifestations of the Godhead in different aspects, incarnation, expansion, manifestation, <coughs> energy, and uh, pure devotee. But then he said also there's a sixth manifestation, that's the pure devotee, spiritual master. All of these six make up the essential categories of the absolute truth, these six. And so the spiritual master is sometimes is called the servitor Godhead. And Balaram has that same description or that same title, that he's always serving the Lord in different ways. He's assisting the Lord. And he mentions also that he appears in different the different rasas. What are the different rasas? Can someone give one rasa? Anybody know what a rasa is? What's a rasa? Huh? What's the? Uh, five classes. Which one? Uh, Say it. Say it again. What's the definition of a rasa first? Give it, what is it? Relationship. Relationship. Relationship, yeah. But a more intricate description would be the, the, the sweet taste of that relationship. <laughs> yeah. So it's called, to use a very, uh, undefinable way to describe it, mellow. <laughs> what is the mellow? Mm, rasa means mellow. <laughs> and so what is, what is the first one we understand? What is the first rasa, the most simplest one? Shanta. Hmm? Shanta. Shanta which is translation into English? Neutrality. Neutrality. So Balaram appears in that rasa as the Lord's umbrella. When we worship the deity, sometimes the umbrella is there. The Lord's bedstead. We put the deities to work, to, to rest. That bedstead is a expansion of Lord Balaram. Uh, the artsy paraphernalia. Be careful how you handle the artsy paraphernalia. That's Lord Balaram also. Um, the Lord's uh, clothes, whatever we dress him in, the Supreme Lord, uh, we're talking about Krishna or Jagannath. These are expansions of Balaram. And some, but not all, of the Lord's jewelry. <laughs> and I gave this class yesterday online. Someone said, well, why not all the jewelry? <laughs> I said, well, some of it is you know, costume jewelry, <laughs> it's junk. <laughs> we don't want to <laughs> consider that Balaram is high quality. <laughs> so that's the real, the real jewelry, the stuff that is actually valuable, at least from a material <coughs> perspective, real jewelry. So, and of course, also the Lord's shoes. That's also Balaram. So that's from the neutrality ras. So he appears in that way to assist the Lord. He wants to serve, he is the Lord, but he wants to serve the Lord. And this is interesting. When the Lord, who is the, the Supreme Lord, who is worshipable, wants to serve. <laughs> we mentioned Ekala Isha Krishna Asa Brita, that, uh, that God is being served by everyone. And he is accepting our service. But in his different manifestations, he likes to serve. In fact, even in his position as Krishna, he's always serving. It shows, and this is, this is the reason why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared in the world, to take the position of a devotee just to experience the happiness of pure devotional service that the devotees experience from his position as pure loving expression in the form of Srimati Radharani's mood for Krishna. 
So how much God likes to serve also. <laughs> so when we think of what is the most valuable thing in this world is devotional service. To get the opportunity to serve is the greatest thing because that service, when it's executed accordingly, brings one's consciousness free from all material suffering and brings one in contact with the Supreme Lord in devotion. There's no other way but by bhakti or devotional service. So how, and bhakti is rare. To get a chance to perform pure devotional service, nectar devotion gives the six, the six characteristics that are prominent in the principle of bhakti. And one of them is, it's very rare to achieve pure devotional service. To get an opportunity to perform pure devotional service. How many people in the world are actually taking, you know, devotional service as their main goal in life? Very, very few. <laughs> very few. And even those who come in contact with him sometimes can't recognize how valuable devotional service is because all of one's desires perfectly and completely can be satisfied by pure devotional service. And one can be completely free from all types of suffering and attain to eternal life in the spiritual world with its full of knowledge and bliss. Can't be compared to anything. <clears throat> it's rare. So the Lord himself likes to perform devotional service. And he's also teaching us how valuable it is and how rare it is by his own example. <clears throat> And then, so, okay, then the next particular rasa is from we have neutrality, then we go to the next one is? Dasha. Hmm? Dasha means? Okay, that's what we all do. We all like to serve, right? We do service in different ways. We cook, we clean, we do kirtan, we worship in different ways. Sometimes we go out and distribute books, or we do... We, in other words, anything in relationship to the process of mm, spiritual master's directions, then that's all considered to be bhakti or devotional service. So Baladev, or Balaram, he's always figuring out ways to serve Krishna in different ways. He uses his creative intelligence to think of how to, to serve Krishna in so many different ways from that point. And the next one up is? Sakya. Hmm? Sakya. Sakya, which is? Friendship. 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 He's Krishna's closest friend. <laughs> Although he's his brother, he acts like a friend also, and then they, they perform many of their pastimes in Vrindavan, and just sporting, playing different games, it says that every game that you ever played as a kid, that is legal. <laughs> of course, some of the ones we played, we don't want to mention. <laughs> Krishna just brought to mind one of the games that I play that I won't mention. <laughs> so I'll forget that one right now. And, uh, yeah, so that was all done by Krishna, Balaram, and his friends in Vrindavan. How many of you played hide and seek when you were kids? Oh boy, this is the game everybody played. Even you, wow. That's good. So there's one particular pastime where Krishna's there with Radharani and many of the gopis are there. So they decide to play hide and seek. So Radharani is the one that has to find everyone. So she, they, she goes hiding and then everybody, and she goes and closes her eyes and everybody goes hiding in different places, the gopis. <clears throat> and Krishna also, he's, he's playing. So then Radharani comes out and she has to find everybody. And you know, it's really not fair. <laughs> but every time she gets close to one of the gopis, because the gopis have so much love for Radharani, 
they can't keep quiet when she's near. <laughs> so they start laughing and making all kinds of sounds and Radharani catches all the gopis. <laughs> but then after catching all the gopis, she says, well, where's that other one, rascal Krishna, <laughs> to find him? So, but he's not playing like the gopis. He's a little bit more, you know, strategic. <laughs> So she's looking this way and that way, and every time he gets, she gets close to him, he changes positions. <laughs> so she can't find him. <laughs> she's going this way, and then finally Krishna's going farther away into the mountains now. <clears throat> so finally she decides to use the ultimate weapon, <laughs> and she starts singing. And what does she sing? The Maha Mantra. <laughs> So she starts chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra so beautifully, so sweetly, with so much love. And Krishna freezes, he can't move, he's stuck. He's got rigor mortis, he's like frozen. <laughs> and then she catches him. She says, I caught you. And he says, well, you cheated. <laughs> and she, and he's, she said, no, you're just a bad loser, and that's all. <laughs> so that way they played her games. And they have so much fun playing in her games. So the idea is to, you know, get out of this material world and get back there and play with Krishna. <laughs> and then there's no more. And there's still prasadam there, so don't worry. <laughs> Everything else is left here. <laughs> Prabhupada said, we'll all be able to go back to Godhead someday, except one person, Mr. Nair. <laughs> He's the one that tried to cheat Srila Prabhupada in the Bombay temple. <laughs> so yeah, as long as we stay seriously engaged in devotional service, we'll eventually achieve devotion to the spiritual world. We want to do it in one life, but if you don't do it in one life, if you stay fixed, at the end of life you get a good situation in your next life, and then you can finish up in your next life. But Prabhupada said, don't wait. Get done to this life. He says, you never know what next life is going to be like. <laughs> so finish up in this life. And then we can play with Krishna in the spiritual world. We like to play, right? Nobody likes to work. <laughs> we, people go to work because they need money, right? But you see, when the weekend comes, it's the favorite time. <laughs> Everybody thinks, now I can go to the mountains, I go to the beach, I can do, I can go and spend some time with my friends and relatives. Everyone likes to play. <laughs> Playing is actually the, the, the quality of the living entity likes to enjoy life in different ways, in varieties of different ways. Work. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta force yourself to like it so you can do it, you know. Because <laughs> devotees don't work anyway, we do devotional service. But sometimes they just think that, well, it's almost like work, you know. <laughs> I gotta take out the trash. <laughs> I have to, you know, clean the floor. It's not work, it's bhakti. <laughs> but sometimes it appears like ordinary activities. But because it's for Krishna, it's actually devotional service. So we can enjoy or we can find happiness in performing any service because it's all for Krishna. It doesn't matter what service we have to do as long as it's, we can do it to please the Lord, to please the devotees. <coughs> So, yeah, and so in the spiritual world they play so many games. So Balaram <coughs> accompanies Krishna. <coughs> Something went wrong here. I think I had. And the next rasa is? Vatsayaras, which means what? Parentohan. The word vatsa means what? Calf. Calf. 
So why does it say why does it say Vatsaya Ras when it's calf rasa? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it means the, the it actually you're 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 very close. <laughs> what it means is that the love for the cow for her her calf is the epitome of motherly love. It, it supersedes even human human emotion. It's the highest form of motherly expression. If there are millions of calves and there's one cow who has one of her calves in that group, she'll find her. She'll find it with no problem. She'll go right to her calf. So the love for a cow, for her calf, is so deep and so sweet. That's why, uh, I don't want to get into that part of the, because it's not very pleasant, but that's why it's called Vatsaya Ras. It's the epitome of motherhood. Like that. And so Balaram, now he's Krishna's brother. So he's more like, but he's the older brother. So when Krishna goes out to play, Mother Yasoda gets worried that Krishna's going to get in trouble. He's going to fall down. He's going to hurt himself, he's going to get bitten by a, a, a dog, fall in a puddle. So she says to Balaram, take care of Krishna. So he, he, he's like his, his protective older brother. And Mother Yasoda feels happy when Balaram's with Krishna. And he performs that service. One time, a demon appeared as a big, powerful fire. It was a forest fire that was engulfing everything. And then all the cowherd boys, Balaram was also there, and Krishna was there. And then Krishna said to everyone, close your eyes. And so everybody closed their eyes, and Krishna went, and he just, you know, prashad. It was kind of, you know, chilly, for sure. It was a little hot and spicy. <laughs> but he, he swallowed the whole fire. <laughs> and and then, he, then everybody opened their eyes and everything was gone. That fire was actually a manifestation of a particular demon who took the form of a fire. And so Balaram, he didn't close his eyes. He wanted to see what was going on. <laughs> Even if he closed his eyes, he can still see, because he's God. So, he... Uh, and then he went to Mother Yasoda, and he said, you know, your son is not satisfied by eating dirt, he's eating fire now. <laughs> Before he was eating dirt, now he's getting into this, you know, other stuff. And so, Mother Yasoda got really alarmed. And she was thinking, what is this? <laughs> and then she was chastising Krishna. Of course, Prabhupada Balaram said he was eating dirt too. And then he ate fire too. <laughs> so, when she was accusing him, Krishna was saying, you know, Balaram is just angry at me, so he's making up all these, you know, false stories about me. <laughs> So, but Balaram's there to protect Krishna. Now, in the last uh, of all of the rasas, which is the, considered the condensation of all sweetness, is what rasa? Madhurya. Madhurya. Ma madhu means honey. And they say the sweetest thing, at least we know of, is honey. Right? Honey. Mm. Some devotees one time, the brahmacharis were frustrated one time, and they took honey and put it on bread and were eating honey and bread. Mm. It's not a good idea for brahmacharis, but anyway, they did it. <laughs> Want some, some relief from brahmachari life, you know. <laughs> the austerities. <laughs> anyway, so honey is very sweet, and it's so therefore it's called madhurya. So Balaram appears as who in that Madhurya Ras? Ananda Mantra. 
Yeah, an Anga Mantri, and who is she? The younger sister. Oh. Shimati Radharani. Ah, thank you. The younger sister of Shimati Radharani. We don't hear too many of the pastimes that that when Balaram appears of that, it's very sweet and confidential. <coughs> One time I was I was in the Ukraine and I was giving a class and I was talking about these five rasas and I mentioned that uh, you know in Madhurya Ras Balaram appears as Ananga Mantri, the younger sister of Srimati Radharani and then I finished the class and then I went back to my room and one and I heard a <laughs> Maharaj, yes, I got to talk to you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> come on in. <laughs> and he didn't look so happy. <laughs> so I was thinking, hmm, I start chanting the Shringa Dave. <laughs> so <laughs> he said, you know, I have to ask you a question. I said, yes. <laughs> So where did you get that idea? Where did you hear this that, you know, Balaram is the younger sister of, you know, of Radharani and Ananga Mantri? Where did you get that? I had no I had no Shastric reference. <laughs> so and then uh, he said, you know, he was not he was not happy with that. <laughs> and then I gave him the ultimate answer. I heard it from Radhanaswami. <laughs> 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 and that's all. That was it. No. <laughs> that was that. That saved me, <laughs> which I did. I did. I gave a class one time in in uh, in Soho Street, and uh, and. Uh, I also, there was another situation where I didn't have a reference and, and I said, I heard it from Radha Swami. <laughs> and, and then it got back to Shiva Ram Maharaj and Shiva Ram Maharaj said, yeah, sometimes I also say that, I heard it from Radha Swami. <laughs> so, saved by the great souls. <laughs> So anyway, yeah. So that there, I don't know of any Shastric reference. Maybe somebody does know of one, but I don't know of any any Shastric reference. But it is mentioned that he appears in that manifestation. So the mood is that Lord Balaram wants to serve in so many manifestations of the Godhead that he is always. Uh, expanding in different aspects of the Godhead to serve Krishna in different ways. So he appears in these different ways. <laughs> so um, there's many, many wonderful pastimes about Lord Balaram. And tonight we'll have another opportunity to speak. Is there anyone who would like to hear of any particular pastime of Balaram and Krishna or any pastime of Balaram that you might be interested in. There's so many. Yeah. Anything, huh? When he bought Jamuna. The Jamuna, ah, Jaha. Yeah. The altar is in that mood, right? Yeah, there's the Jamuna. Balaram. Jamuna Jivana Kali Parayanan. <laughs> so. Balaram, after he came, he left Dwarka and came to, to Vrindavan and he spent two months during the, the month of Chaitra, Chaitra, which is April, May. It's a very auspicious month. At that time he performed rasa dance with his gopis. It's Krishna has a set of gopis and Balaram has his own set of gopis, which are younger gopis. And when Balaram was performing many of his pastimes, he uh, got intoxicated. <laughs> and
and he uh, <laughs> this is legal <laughs> not well like what we do <laughs> and uh, well how did he get intoxicated and he uh, drank some beverage called Varuni Varuni is honey liquor it's not just honey it's honey and it's ultimate principle of intoxication <laughs> I mean, if you drink enough honey, you'll get drunk, you'll get intoxicated. But if you keep it in a certain way, it can also turn into some form of intoxication. So, Varuni beverage, and then so he was, Balaram was intoxicated. And he's, uh, he's uh, criticizing uh, Indra. And he calls Indra, you uh, plaything of Sachi. Sachi is his wife. <laughs> and he's looking at the moon. It's described that when Balaram was looking at the moon, the moon was changing different shapes. <laughs> so Balaram was intoxicated. Okay, so after that pastime, Balaram now wanted to go sporting in the Jamuna with his gopis. So he called Jamuna over to come and be there, but she didn't come. She had seen his intoxication. She was thinking, who's this? <laughs> 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 this guy's breaking the regulative principles. <laughs> you know, probably doesn't chant his rounds either. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, if you're going to break the regulative principles, you probably don't hang your house Because <laughs> you can't chant if you break the regulative principles. And uh, so she was hesitating to appear. And Balaram wanted to let her know who he was. <laughs> so he took out his plowshare. He has two weapons, or two, two, para two forms of paraphernalia. Sometimes they're considered weapons, or sometimes they're considered just to be his paraphernalia. What are the two? Club and the plow. Plow and? The club. Club. And the plow's name is what? Hadla. Hala. Hmm? Yeah, Hala. Uh, sometimes they say it's Hala, but he's, Balaram holds the plow, so he's Dara, Hala Dara. The holder of the plow and the club is hmm? gada. That's that's what a, a club is. Is a gada. It's just the Sanskrit name. What's the name of it? Sunanda. <laughs> that's his name of the his club. It's called Sunanda. So he took out Haladar Hala, and he dug it into the ground right around Jamuna and he started to bifect, bisect or by cut apart Jamuna into different streams. And then she started to understand, oh my God, this is not an ordinary person. <laughs> it must be the Supreme Lord himself. And so then she appeared in her transcendental forest, Kalindi, Kalindi Jamuna Jaya. And she, uh, she offered prayers and glorifications of Lord Balaram. And Balaram was pleased by her prayers and therefore he desisted. So it says even today the Jamuna has many tributaries. It was all due to Balaram. And then Balaram took bath with his scopies <laughs> in the Jamuna. Is that okay? Is there more to it? <laughs> I think that's all I know of that particular pastime. Yeah, he, but he was, he was, he was a little angry at her, transcendental anger. <laughs> Any other pastime you want to hear? Yeah. Okay, Palambasura. There were two demons, Dainakasura and Palambasura, that were killed by Balaram. 
All of the demons that we know of, at least that's who we have, are, are mostly killed by Krishna. It says that bhakti, when you execute your devotional service, you are purifying your heart and getting rid of what is called the anarthas. Anartha means things that are unwanted, things that block our spiritual life, certain characteristics, certain activities that we should avoid or may be present due to our association with the material energy. These are called anarthas. Artha means wanted, unartha means unwanted, or things that are inauspicious. So there are two demons specifically killed by Balaram, Dana Gasora and Palambasora, which indicate that these two anarthas that these demons represent, because the demons represent different anarthas, uh, have to be done by your own effort in devotional service. In other words, Balaram is there as the spiritual master. He is the manifestation of the pure spiritual master who comes as your spiritual master to guide you in devotional service. By, by the power of your devotion in executing your spiritual master's instructions, you have to tackle these two anarthas directly. In other words, you have to make an effort. So, the story of Palambasura is one of them. And Palambasura represents hmm, wrong association or illicit association with the opposite sex. And so, the story is that when Krishna and Balaram were Vrindavan, they liked to play games. And in the games, they used to play with their friends. And they would divide up and have competitive games. So one time, they made two teams, Balaram's team and Krishna's team. And one particular cowherd boy didn't show up that day. He had to stay home because he was, wasn't feeling good. So he didn't, come, he didn't join in the play. And so this demon took advantage of that and he disguised himself as that cowherd boy. And he joined, he, he, he joined Krishna's team in this play. So, in Krishna's team and Balaram's team, they were playing the different games. There was some kind of competitiveness. And, uh, and then Balaram's team lost, Krishna's team won. So, no, no, Balaram's team won. I'm sorry, yeah, Balaram's team won. Oh, I got it backwards, yeah. And Krishna's team lost, so the, the Participants on Krishna's team had to take the winners on Balaram's team on their back as some way to celebrate their victory. So this demon, who was in the form of a cowherd boy, put Balaram on his back. And then he, Balaram's thinking, ah, I get a nice ride by this nice cowherd boy. <laughs> And so he's walking, and, he's, and then he starts running, and then he's going faster, and he's getting out of the area of Vrindavan. And then Balaram's thinking, where is this cowherd boy going? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the demon manifested his form as a demon, and then became this big, huge, gigantic, copper-eyed demon who was with big, fierce teeth. And, his hair was scattered in all directions. He was really hideous looking, mm, uh, ugly. Mm. Somebody you would never like to see ever. <laughs> and uh, Balaram looking at him thinking, it's a demon. <laughs> so he went, <coughs> <laughs> finished. <laughs> Don't <Don't> waste time. <laughs> Jai Balaram. <laughs> no, he gave him a, you know, more than a headache. <laughs> he, fi fi he fixed his head for completely for good, <laughs> cracked it right open. He said that the blood was running out of his head and looked like liquid oxide, <laughs> describes in the pastime there. And so then Balaram killed this demon really easy. So, yeah, so it mentions that that, that particular anartha, improper or illicit activities in relationship to the opposite sex, 
is one of the anarthas that devotees sometime encounter in the execution of devotional service. And one has to somehow avoid that by their own efforts. But their efforts have to be coupled by following carefully the instructions of the spiritual master and praying for the Lord's mercy. Whereas the other demons that were killed by Krishna, by the power of your own devotional service, you can overcome these demons or these anarthas. But these other ones, the one Dhanakasura represents carrying old baggage from previous lives, laziness, lethargy, uh, and Palumbasura represents the illicit connection with the opposite sex. So therefore, we pray to Lord Balaram for his mercy to overcome these anarthas. Because anartha means a block, something that's going to cause your devotional service not to move forward. In other words, you can't make any advancement. You don't necessarily fall down, but if you continue in that way, you will fall down. But these things are like obstacles because they are unwanted. The bhakti contains things to do and things to avoid. And Sanatana Goswami says, in order for bhakti to be successful, we have to carefully avoid certain activities and certain mindsets that lead to wrong activities. And therefore I see, at least from my experience in devotional service, devotees know what to do, but they don't know what not to do. <laughs> we have that problem. <laughs> so, yeah. So we still make mistakes by doing the things we shouldn't be doing or acting or thinking in the wrong way which leads to wrong activities. So therefore we have to be very careful and always focus on what are what are what is what is the positive activities in devotional service. And therefore if one remains fixed in devotional service, it becomes easy to overcome these anarthas. As soon as we break from devotional service and allow the mind to take us into other areas where we somehow may find some attraction for something material that is not beneficial to our spiritual life, and we slow down our process of devotional service. So how to avoid that? Well, it's not so easy because the material world is situated in such a way as to attract your mind away from devotional service. Material energy is there, Maya is very strong. And Prabhupada would say, Maya knows wherever you're weak. Wherever you are weak in devotional service, sometimes devotees think, hmm, why does that same problem keep coming up? <laughs> Have you had that experience? That same Maya keeps coming up all the time because that's where you're weak. And Krishna is allowing Maya to attack you in that way, so you, you cover your point and then you somehow overcome that and become strong and not become victimized by that. So therefore, Maya is always uh, actively helping us to become strong in devotional service by pointing out our weaknesses and uh, trying to attract us in that way. But if we stay fixed in devotional service, how do we do that? And satatam kirtayantam vam, by always chanting the holy names of the Lord by always remembering the Lord, and by always using our time in devotional service. Manaso deho geho, yogyachu mor arpi lutu aut pade nanda kishore. So nanda sabakti vinota akur gives the formula. Whatever I have, wherever I am, let me use it in your devotional service. It belongs to you. Actually, we have nothing. We have nothing. Everything we have that we consider to be us is given to us. Our body is given to us. Our soul, who we are, actually is part of Krishna.